In this video, we demonstrate how Karma can be used to deal with a fire relief scenario in Lost Hills oil field. This is the user interface of Karma. The top half shows the spreadsheet type interface where the user can view the imported data. The bottom half shows all the different kinds of information integration operations that Karma supports such as data import, data cleaning, data integration and data publication. So, in the fire relief scenario, we first import the location of the fire through a KML file. We specify the location of the file on disk. Karma automatically understands the geospatial context in the data and the data is visualized on the browser automatically. We then might be interested in the oil wells that are nearby this fire location. Such oil well data is present as open source through the Department of Conservation website of State of California. We downloaded this data as an Excel spreadsheet. And this is how the downloaded spreadsheet looks like. Since it contains information about all the wells in California, we made two subsets out of this data. One for the Chevron wells and one for the non-Chevron wells. Now we can import the oil well data spreadsheet. So first we import the chevron oil wells. Again we just specify the location of the file and press import all data button. This is how the data looks like in Karma spreadsheet. This data is also visualized on the map automatically. We can see all the detailed information about each well on the map by clicking on it. Similarly, we can also import the data about the non-chevron wells. The non-chevron oil wells are shown with purple balloons. The visualization interface allows you to turn any geospatial layer on or off at any time for better viewing. Next, we import the list of personals that are currently around this area. This data is also present as a KML file. As we can see, we also have the phone information for each person. But as we can see in the data, each phone number is preceded by the phone colon string which can create problems for an auto dialer software to use these numbers. So we need to do some normalization on this data. To do that, first we specify the column and then in Karma, we need to specify an example of the normalized data. Then press return and Karma automatically learns the transformation and applies it to the remaining examples. We can now use the clean data. Next, we import the location of an evacuation center where the personals should report to in case of fire. It is the nearest health center available in the Lost Hills. Once we have the information about the evacuation center, we now want to compute the shortest path for each of the person to this evacuation center. As we can see in the map view, we do not have much detailed road information about this area. So in order to get more street vector data, we are now going to show you how we can use our tool Strabo to extract road layers from a USGS raster map for Lost Hills. In this demo, we show that we use our map processing software Strabo to extract named road vector data from a USGS PDF map. This is a USGS PDF map and the PDF format cannot be used in a GIS software for spatial analysis. So the first step, now we are exporting 
layers of roads and layers of names into images. Now we open Strabo, we load in the road layer. This is an image, and we click on the processing button. Strabo automatically generates the centerline representation of the road lines. So now the road lines are in the road in the vector format. We can save it. The next step is to recognize the road labels. So we load in the layer of text names. To recognize these multi-oriented labels, the user has to click on the processing button and Strabo automatically figure out where are the text labels and rotate them to the horizontal direction. So you can see that here are the Strabo result. All those text labels are in the horizontal directions. With these labels, now we use a commercial OCR software to recognize the characters. Because commercial OCR software can only process horizontal or vertical uh, text strings. So you can see now we have the recognition result. With this recognition result and the extracted road vector data, Strabo will automatically generate the named road vector data by associating these road names with the extracted road vectors. So here we open ArcGIS. We are going to show you uh, the extracted name road vector data and the original PDF map. Here we load in the named road vector data we just extracted. We turn off the PDF layer. And we ask ArcGIS to label these roads with the associate road names. So you're, here you can see the extracted name road vector data on top of an uh, image. Unlike in the PDF format, now we can click on individual road segment and we can find the road names on the upper right corner. So these row names are the recognized tags associated with individual road segments.
Okay, this is the demo. Thank you. Once the road network has been extracted from the raster map, we can now load it into Karma. The extracted data is also present in KML format. The result will be shown on the map browser. The extracted streets are shown in the red lines. Next, we need to identify the roads that are still safe to use in presence of fire. To perform this reasoning task, we will use a web service called Reduce Road Network. It takes input of the road network and the fire polygons. The output of the service will be also visualized on the map. As we can see on the map, it removed all the roads from the road network that were under the fire polygons. Once we have the reduced road network, we can now compute the shortest evacuation route for each person to reach the evacuation center. Again, we will use a web service called Shortest Path which computes the shortest route between two points. It takes input of reduced road network list of persons and their positions and the evacuation center. We can now see the results on the map where the blue lines show the shortest path to the center for each person. In order to understand the effects of weather conditions on the fire, we will compute how the fire progresses in the future according to the current weather conditions such as wind speed and wind direction. So first, we get the current weather conditions using a publicly available web service. It takes input of any latitude and longitude of a point location. So we can use any sample lat long coordinate located inside the lost hills. We can see the output of weather conditions in the table such as the wind speed and wind direction. Next, we import a spreadsheet containing a list of time intervals for which we want to compute the fire conditions in the future. So as we can see in the list, we are going to compute what the fire conditions will be after 30, 60, 90 and 120 minutes. Once we have all our input data, we can now use the predict fire web service to calculate the future fire conditions. It takes input of the fire location, weather conditions and the list of time intervals. We can see the output on the map and easily visualize how the fire is going to progress with time. To compute which person will be in danger in future, we can use the points within polygon web service. It takes input of the fire polygons and the people locations. As we can see in the output, two people will be in danger and hence should be contacted as soon as possible. Now in order to get their phone numbers, we can do a join between the current table and the person list data source which has the phone information for each person. This is the data source with phone data. In order to do such integration in Karma, we need to go to the Integrate tab and press Join button. Karma automatically identifies the possible joins and suggests the column that it can add, such as phone. So now we have their phone information also. We can publish our integrated data in numerous ways. For all the sources with geospatial context, Karma can generate a KML layer 
which can then be visualized in any GIS software such as Google Earth or GIS. Here we can generate a KML layer for the evacuation routes and load it in Google Earth. We can also generate a CSV spreadsheet for all the people in danger. We can then view the published data in the Excel software. 